So here we have the solution to exercise 2, the video questions. First we have a few observations here. Altogether these are 6 observations and we are meant to calculate mean, standard deviation, variance, median and skewness. Now these sorts of problems we should always use a table. Okay, Always use a tabular approach. Don't try and do any short cuts. So how do we start here? We uh, shall just use a, a variable xi. So we call our observations xi. You can call them whatever you want. And we have an index 1 and index i and that goes from 1 to 6, which is how many observations we have. So we have observation 6.9 and so forth up to 0 0.5, that's the last one. Then we have a row where we calculate the sum for all sorts of things. So for instance the sum of all the xi's that they all add up to have a little mental arithmetic they uh, all the uh, numbers after the decimal points are zero and we add them all up so we have 30 all together so let's with that information first calculate the sample mean which is just one over the sample size which is six here times the sum of all xi now the uh, sum of all xi, of course, exactly what we just calculated, the 30. And therefore, our sample mean is 1 over 6 times 30. And that, fortunately, is quite easy. That's just 5. So that means we've got the sample mean calculated. What we need next is the sample standard deviation. So let's first write down the formula just to make sure that we know what we need to calculate. So what we need is 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of all xi minus x bar squared, which is the sample mean and we calculate the sample standard deviation we need to take the square root of the whole thing. So as you can see at the core here is a term called the sum of xi minus x bar. So we need to calculate xi minus x bar. So we have a new column where we calculate xi minus x bar. x bar is of course just 5. Our sample mean, so 6.9 minus 5 is 1.9, and we can do that for all the remaining rows. Okay, 3.1 minus 5 is negative 1.9, and so forth. So what we need, however, is the sum of the squared column of this. If you actually sum this column, you get zero, and you will always get zero in this case. So we need the squared value of this. So 1.9 squared is nothing else but 3.61. Negative 1.9 is also squared 3.61 and so forth. We can do that for all the remaining values and then we calculate the sum of this column and we'll get 48.28. Now 48.28 is exactly that blue underlined term, the sum of xi minus x bar squared. So with that information, and we know what our sample size n is, that is 6, we can plug all we know into this formula. So we get the square root of 1 over 6 minus 1, so that is 5, times the sum which we just calculated, 48.28. And so if we turn that through in the calculator, it's a bit slow because the computer calculator is not quite as handy to use, so it's 9.656. So the sample standard deviation 
is the square root of 9.656 and the square root of that is 3.1074 let's write that down 3.1074 so next we are meant to calculate the sample variance so, so standard deviation is done now the sample variance so of course the sample variance is s squared which is just the squared value of our sample standard deviation or actually exactly 9.656 that's the value which we already calculated before 9.656 that is the sample variance okay, because it was the square root of that which was the standard deviation so that means we've calculated the sample variance so as you see these were sample statistics and we divided by n minus 1 so let's before we look at the median actually let's briefly think about the population statistics let's imagine I had asked you to calculate the population variance so how would we calculate that that would be 1 over n times the sum of x i minus x bar squared now of course that sum is exactly what we already used for the sample standard deviation and variance so we've calculated that already it's this blue bit and it's 48.28 but if we calculate the population variance we'll have to divide that by n not by n minus 1 so we divide it by 6 so 1 over 6 times 48.28 is the population variance 8.0 467 so we want the sample or population variance depends on whether you know whether these six observations we have are the population of interest or the sam or a sample of the population of interest if you were asked to calculate the population standard deviation that would of course just be the square root of the population variance and that would be the square root of 8.0467 so you can see how valuable this tabular approach is because you see all these different statistics are sort of all based on the same calculations so you know if you want to calculate variances or standard deviations you should always create this sort of table so let's think about the median so what we'll do is I'll just create a new column here and I'll put in the order of the values so for instance we know the smallest value is 0.5 so that's the smallest let's label that one next highest 3.1 then 4.2 then 5.9 and 6.9 then 9.4 so this is the order of the values since we have an even number of observations what we need is the average of the middle observations so let's just briefly put down the numbers 1 to 6 the two middle observations are 3 and 4 since we have even observations we don't have one middle observation and what we want is the average of these two values so the third value was 4.2 the fourth value was 5.9 and the average of these you can see whether your mental arithmetic arithmetic is up to scratch that should be 5.05 .05. so that is the median in our set of observations
so the last statistic we are meant to calculate is the skewness and the formula which you should know for this one is 3 times the sample mean minus the sample median divided by the sample standard deviation. So we have calculated everything here. The mean was 5, the median was 5.05, the sample standard deviation was 3.1074. So we just plug this all into the calculation and what we get is negative 0 0.0483 so that's pretty close to zero it's negative so that means if at all there's a negative skew but you can see the median and the mean are extremely close together which is uh, an indication of a fairly symmetric distribution Let's start with question 2, which is based on the survey data. We want to create a frequency table. You are given two already, so I copy that table and all the times into a spreadsheet. So let's find out how many observations we have smaller than 10. We could just highlight all the observations up to 10 and count. And you can see on the bottom right there's a count and these were 129 observations. Now there's a different way. We can click on auto filter, filter auto filter, and then we can try and find values between two values and we type in 11 and 20, which is the second category on the bottom left. We can again read off how many they are. These were 319. And then we do the same for the other categories. We go to a number filter between again, now between 21 and 30, and we find um, these were 87. You can always read off once you've collected them on the bottom left hand corner. Let's do it for the next one. Between 31 and 30 on the bottom left hand you can see how many it's selected. Okay, here in this example that was 18. And now for the last group between 41 and 50. Again we select everyone between 41 and 50 and then we just check how many have been selected. So 13 here. So that means we have our frequency table completed. 578 observations, that's true. So we just tested that. Now we want uh, we want to plot a histogram of that information. These are the travel times of students to university. So we go back, what we want, these were the frequency, what we want are proportions. So we take 129 and divide by 578. We put the dollar signs in for the 578 to fix it. So then we can copy down and we print column, a bar chart, and that's basically our histogram. So we can um, add the category labels here and we can add a title, let's call it travel times. Okay, and then we get our, uh, our graph. Oh, I I press cancel rather than uh, confirm. So we'll first have our travel times and here's our histogram. Okay, so that was part B. Now we are meant to calculate some statistics. The sample mean, the uh, sample standard deviation, sample variance, and we also want the uh, median and the fifth and the 99th percentile and lastly we also wanted the fourth quintile think about what that is and skewness so let's start with the sample mean so we all together have, um, makes our life easier, 578 observations up to row 579. That's where the data are in A2 to A579. That's where we find the data. So the easiest is we just say equals average A2 colon A579. Okay, enter sample mean 20. Okay, so that 20 is of course rounded. Um, you would have the exact numbers if you looked at the instruction sheet because I asked you 
to check that. Let's see, let's actually have four decimals. So then standard deviation stdef and there's a dot s and dot p dot s for sample and again of data a2 to a579 not 18. Sample variance is of course just standard deviation squared. Median is median equal median of the data in a2 to a579. Now the percentile you just need to know the command equals percentile and ink is what we use a2 to a579 and we want the fifth percentile 0.05 and the 99th percentile we can just copy this formula and paste it into that and then all we need to change is the 0.05 to 99 0.99 now the fourth quintile is the same as the 80th percentile quintiles dividing into five bits and the fourth of that is at the 80th that means we use the same percentile command and just look for the 80th percentile. Now skewness that compare the sample mean with the sample median so we needed a difference of sample mean sample median but multiplied by 3 and divided by the standard deviation we get this 0 0.8066 some positive skew. Now we want to standardize values the two values we want to standardize are 11 and 27 and you know the standardization formula it's that value minus the sample mean divided by the sample standard deviation okay so we fix the mean and sample standard deviation and we can just copy that uh, cell down so here are our results okay negative 0.48 and positive 0.36 then in which percentile are the two values 11 and 22 minutes so what we need to know is how many values are smaller and how many are larger than 11 and 27 respectively so the way to do that is with the count if so we want to count if uh, and where in a2 to a579 that's where our data and the criterion is smaller than 11 we put that in inverted commas and we'll find that 129 observations are smaller than 11 let's copy that and paste that here change the small 11 to smaller than 27 we get 485 so we have 485 observations smaller than 27 we do the same for larger just need to change the sign in our count if command in both on both occasions then we can see how many observations do we have all together 578 and the percentile is then just the proportion of those smaller of the total so 22.3 and 84 percent for 27 next question question three so just a uh, set of observations and we have to calculate a few statistics. It's so important to be able to calculate these statistics which is why I give you just another example. So for part I we'll just start with a little table again. Here are all the observations and here we got a table and what we want to calculate is the sample mean and that is 1 over the number of observations 5 divided by the sum of all xi now if we add all of these guys up we should get 26, 28 minus 18 so we get 10 so therefore the sample mean is 1 over 5 times 10 which is of course 2. So we also want the sample standard deviation. You know that we need an, another column. We need the deviations of xi from the sample mean. I'll actually let's calculate the median first. So we'll order all the observations, the middle value, we have an odd number of observations, the middle value is the median. So, what about the sample standard deviation is, of course, just the square root of the variance, sample variance, and the sample variance is 1 over n minus 1, which is 4, times the sum of all xi minus x bar squared. 
So we need another column. We need eventually xi minus x bar squared, but first let's calculate xi minus x bar. Negative 1 minus 2 is of course minus 3, and we can complete this column. Then we need the squares of this xi minus x bar squared. So negative 3 squared is 9, 0 squared is 0, and so forth. 20 squared is 400. And then we want the sum of all these, and that's 774, 774. So that's that red underlined bit. Therefore we can calculate the sample variance. So the sample variance is 1 over 4 times 774, and that is equal to, let me do some calculations in the background, 193.5. So that's our sample variance. The sample standard deviation is of course, of course the square root of that. Square root of 193.5 is 13.91. So that was the um, that was part the first part of the question. So let's think of the second set of observations. Here it is again. Here's the table with all the data, and let's do our calculations. Just another bit of practice. Eh? So sample mean 1 over 5 times the sum of all xi. Quick calculation of the sum here that should be negative let's see is that right negative 60? Yeah neg negative 60. So x bar will be 1 over 5 times negative 60 and we'll get negative 12. Then we need xi minus x bar, so negative 1 minus negative 12 is plus 11. And then we can do that for the rest of the observations. Again they sum to 0, but what we are really interested in is xi minus x bar squared, so 11 squared is 1, 2, 1, 10 squared is 100 and so forth, negative 30 squared is 900 and all values in that column sum up to 1166. Therefore, we want the sample standard deviation. First we calculate the sample variance, 1 over n minus 1 times the sum of xi minus x bar squared. These formulas you just need to know. Then the red bit is 1166. Therefore, the sample variance is 1 over 4 times 1, 1, 6, 6, and that is nothing else but 291.5. And the sample standard deviation is the square root of that. 17.07. So that was this, question 4. Uh, you have of course read the question, so we have a few a small company with altogether 13 employees and there are sort of three different salaries here and the boss of the company says the average salary is 30,000 a year. Now does that sound reasonable? Uh, let's think about that. So there's a salary of 300,000, well, there's a salary of 10,000 and of 8,000. Now of course the point is that these different salaries don't appear with these uh, the same frequency and we will want to calculate therefore a weighted average. So what do we base the weights on, we base them on the frequency with which these salaries occur. So the 300,000 salary occurs once, then we have two employees with two, uh, 10,000, and we have 10 employees with uh, 9, of course, let's undo this, 10 
with 8,000. So altogether we have 13 employees, therefore the weight for the first salary will be 1 over 13. 1 out of 13 has that salary, 2 out of 13 have a salary of 10,000 and 10 out of 13 have a salary of 8,000. If you add the weights you'll get 1, of course. So the weighted mean, the formula for that, which of course you need to know is xi times wi or yi times xi doesn't matter so let's create another column with this and wi times xi and what do we get so what we need is 300,000 times 1 13th the result here is 23,076.92 and we do that for the other two rows as well 10,000 times 2 divided by 13 and 8,000 times 10 divided by 13 this is the result so now we have the three values for wi times xi and what we need is the sum of all these doing this in the background here. You can't see I'm not dragging in the calculator. It takes a bit of typing. Here we go. Here's the result. 3, 0, 7, 6, 9.2. So that's the weighted average. So indeed the uh, owner of the fat cat company is about right. He says the you know, the average pay is about 30,000. Indeed, the weighted mean is 30,769.23. So it's a true statement, but is this statement a reasonable one? Is that a fair reflection of the average salary in the, in the company? To do this, I want to plot a little histogram or bar chart with frequencies. Now we really only have, so here we have the salaries and let's say in thousands of pounds, in thousand pounds, so we can save a few zeros, so salary of 8,000, salary of 10,000 and then a much much larger salary, so this little squiggly bit indicates that the scale isn't, uh, isn't true of 300,000. Now we have altogether 10 observations. So here we have the frequency on the vertical axis for 8,000, we have two observations for 10,000 and we have one observation for 300,000. So you can see it's an extremely skewed distribution, positively skewed, so the measure of skewness would you be positive and the weighted average is somewhere between the highest salary and the next highest. So is this statement reasonable? Well we said it's correct but it's certainly not a fair reflection of what employees in this, comp in this company earn on average. So I'd say it's not reasonable. In a, in, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't reflect what you want to say. I, a much better measure of the average salary in this case is the median. So the argument is very much like the income, the income in an economy. So if we lined up all our observations, 10 eights, that's eight so far, two tenths and one 300,000. So altogether we have 13 observations to get the median we know we need to look at a particular observation. We have an odd number and that particular observation is number of observations plus 1 over 2 which is 7. So we are looking for the 7th observation and that's an 8. So the median here is 8. So a better expression of an average income here would be a median income in that company and that median income is 8,000 pounds.